Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I know, please don't hurt me. I have been having a hell of a couple of weeks, but I am back on the channel. I have two videos to post for you today. Just need a little time for myself and I hope you guys can understand that. But I am back, I am in full effect. After this, you will not get a video later than Friday. And tell me why I'm realizing today on February 25th, the day of our Lord in 2024, I'm just realizing that I was talking in my microphone upside <laughs> I was talking in my microphone upside down the entire time. Like, are you freaking kidding me? Anyway, guys, that's all I have to say. I hope you forgive me and let's just get right into this review. So we start the episode ending off when Emily ended up getting hurt. Emily ended up getting hurt on the ATV. So we're at the hospital now. Brennan says that she doesn't have a concussion. She has no brain injuries, thank God. Thank God, that's what I was concerned about. And all she needed was some stitches. Girl, God's got your back, girl. You, uh, Angel was on your side that day. And I hate that I had to see that on a mother freaking show. And I hate that Lifetime took advantage of that for ratings. And jerks, y'all got nothing else. You don't have anything else interesting to show on this damn show. And Lauren is here with Claire and they're listening to what he's saying to them. Brennan is so annoyingly fake. It's annoying, okay? Anyway, Brennan tells them about the gash in her forehead and that a branch went underneath her helmet and that's how she ended up, you know, getting hurt. But other than that, everything is fine. So Claire is like, is she there? Can we talk to her? Claire, the girl just got into an accident. Why do you need to talk to her right now? You can't wait till she gets back to the house? back the hell up off of her okay i would have at least let the girl you know recover wash the blood out of her hair and then talk to her if she's up and able brennan hands emily the phone emily says that she didn't know you know if she was okay but she knows that she's good now so emily says she feels like she's gonna cry so she's getting emotional so claire that's your cue to say you know what girl i'll talk to you later but i've noticed lately that people have a problem following Call them cues. Brennan hangs up the phone and, you know, they say goodbye. And um, Brennan says to Emily, you know, you're going to be all right. I got your back. Brennan, you never had her back any of the other weeks. But I understand. Obviously, when somebody gets into an accident, you want to show your support. You want to be there for them. Even if you don't like them, you're going to be at your nicest. You're going to be on your best behavior. We're here with Chloe and Michael and Chloe says to Michael that I cannot wait to see what the other couples have to say about your skirt. Chloe, they have their own issues. Trust and believe um, the last and least of their worries is your, your man that likes to wear skirts. So they're getting ready to go on the retreat finally after their little bootlegged honeymoon lifetime you should be ashamed of yourself and you know what chloe i dislike you less because i am beginning to see the real you come out it, even if you were fake for a couple of episodes week after week i'm noticing chloe starting to be more real about how she really feels this was you know for me she was putting on an act for a couple of episodes and now i feel like she's starting to be more real and she's starting to make me like her more oh chloe girl you cracked me up in this scene right here okay, so chloe says that it's going to take her a little time to get used to michael's fashion choices girl we have been dealing with michael's fashion choices since a month now how long we've been doing this and um girl we're still not used to it chloe says that she doesn't want to dwell on it but it's not easy when <laughs> he wears what he wears. Chloe says that she's hoping that the more she gets to know him, the more these fashion choices become less of a concern for her. Michael asks Chloe if she's excited to go to this retreat and she says that she's looking forward to hanging with the girls. They didn't really have much time to talk at the wedding. And Chloe got jokes. You ready? Yes. Here, I got the door for No, you. no, no. After you. Oh, thank you. Prince. <laughs> Chloe. Chloe. Chloe, cut it out. We're here with Becca and Austin. Becca caught a stomach bug, so she's not feeling well. And Austin's like, oh, shucks. I wanted to put in some more effort. No, you didn't, you freaking liar. Why are you lying for? Emily's still laying down in the hospital room. She says to Brennan that they can really learn a lot about each other in this time right now. When you're not well, it really puts things into perspective for you. So Brennan tells us that Emily has a four inch gash from her forehead all the way up to her scalp. So ultimately she's going to need to have plastic surgery. He says that he's been a trooper, she's been a warrior. So Brennan says the fact that they were able to overcome this situation together shows the type of bond that they have together. Chloe and Michael end up 
going to the retreat and they greet everybody as they're coming in. So Claire says that she's looking forward to getting to know Chloe and Michael. She says the wedding was nice, but the wedding really isn't a depiction of how the relationship is going to be later. Austin lets everyone know that Becca is under the weather. Lauren lets them know that Emily and Brennan had an, you know, a situation where Emily got into an accident, but she's doing fine. She's just, that's why she's not there right now. Austin tells them that they decided to get a personal chef. So they're getting seated for dinner. And Claire says that they were going to have this little game where everybody dresses up as their spouse. And who are you dressing up as? Who are Lauren dressing up as? I'm curious. Anyway, girl. Chloe responds. Yeah, uh, I don't think you understand how uh, close to the truth that is. A girl, when you joke about something, is really how you feel intently in your heart. So you can joke all you want. You have a huge problem with it. And then Austin starts talking about how he got drunk and had a good night laughing with um, Becca or whatever. Um, um, nobody cares anyway. It's time for steak. It's steak time. And that's the steak y'all eat. Y'all better put that thing back on that damn stove because that don't look cooked. I don't want nothing pink on my plate. Chloe and Michael are talking about how it was basically an adjustment for them. And it's pretty much been a whirlwind of emotions for the both of them. Lauren is just giving them advice about, you know, giving each other grace. I mean, the grace that, oh, Ryan never gave her. But, you know, we're all over it and I still can't understand why these people are still here. Like, why are you guys here? Why are, why are y'all here? Claire, why are you here? Oh, Ryan, why are you here? Lauren, why y'all here? Why are y'all here? I don't understand why. So Michael asks them, he hopes that he's not overstepping, but he wants to know how everybody's marriage journeys are going. Michael, are you ready? Are you ready? Because you're gonna get an earful right now. Orion lets Michael and them know that their marriage only lasted 10 days. Orion says that there were a lot of difficult, intense things that happened and he says that there's been a lot of tension and he's hoping that by coming to the retreat that him and Lauren can have some kind of dialogue. And then he turns to Lauren and asks her, he's like, I'm sorry I didn't bring it up. You know, that is something that uh, I was looking forward to this weekend, if it's possible. Lauren says to us that Orion has a great demeanor when he's in front of the crowd, but when the cameras are not on, he has nothing to freaking say to her. He doesn't even try. She says that it's coming off inauthentic. It's not real. It's coming off fake and it's annoying. He asks her, are you going to respond to what I'm saying? And Lauren says, you know what? I think I'm just going to drink this wine right here. Okay. And she did not answer him. So in the next scene, Emily is being rolled out to go get her stitches. Okay, so now they're playing this game where everybody is going to guess each other's confessions and none of it was important except the fact that Austin has open mouth kissed a donkey. You're not just hearing this. He really did this. He really said this. He admitted to this. Austin, that's disgusting. And did it stop at kissing is what I'm wondering. And I would never kiss you again. If I was Becca, I would bleach my tongue. I would bleach my tongue until 2027. And I'd never kiss you again because that was really disgusting. Dude, is this normal? Can somebody put in the comment section whether this is normal? You open kiss mouth animals. I wasn't going to talk about it because I really don't care. But anyway, Chloe has the last secret. She talks about pouring a cocktail on one of the members of Good Charlotte. She talks about going to an in sync, um, I guess, meetup. I don't know what the hell. But um, yeah, I think she just wanted to name drop. I don't believe anything she's saying out of her mouth. It's not important, I promise. Michael said, who is this woman and what else is she hiding? Either way, he's into it. He does not care. Oh, Ryan says, after hearing what happened to Emily, it really makes things a little more prominent as to what matters to him and what should matter in life, okay? So now he's going to go talk to Lauren and Lauren, I'm pretty sure, doesn't want to hear it. Just like us. We don't want to hear it. We really... Do not care to hear your freaking lips flapping for the millionth time, Orion. I wish you'd leave the damn show permanently. So Orion says that he wants to create a new narrative with Lauren that isn't so negative. Um, you're negative. The whole situation is negative. And I'm tired of seeing your face on my screen. Okay? I'm tired of it. I'm over it. Anyway, so Orion says to Lauren that he would like to build a bridge. I need you to build a bridge, go to the end of it, and jump off of it. Is that nice? That's not nice, right? I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't want you to die. Um, 
I literally don't want you to die. I just want you to shut the hell up. I promise. I don't want you to die. I just want you. I just want your lips to accidentally on purpose get glued shut. And I want never to be able to have to hear you ever again. Is that wrong? I'm just saying. So Orion says to Lauren that he wants to build a bridge and he wants things to be better between them communication wise. The only time you're missing y'all's connection is when the cameras are running. You're not slick, Orion. You're really not. So Orion says to her, I don't know if me mentioning, I don't know if me mentioning it at dinner caught you off guard. Orion, why wouldn't it catch her off guard when you've never mentioned it? You guys talked all night long with the group and you never brought it up, but you want to bring it up at the dinner. You're stupid and you're annoying. So Lauren says that it doesn't seem like it's fair for you to want to now be partners in divorce. Okay. You want to be the mother freaking super twins of divorce. Lauren says that, you know, she didn't get that partnership when he decided to file for divorce. Says that she didn't get a say and it really hurt her feelings. And she says to him that, you know, he could have very well pulled her to the side yesterday to, to say that, hey, I wanted to talk to you or whatever. Lauren says that you could have texted, you could have called, and it just feels like he put her on the spot in front of everybody. Feels like it because he did. So she, she says that you put me on the spot in front of the other couples and when you bring stuff up, to me like that it just doesn't seem real you don't seem authentic so lauren at this point is crying and girl i'm gonna need you to stop crying over this mother freaking frog face b word okay i'm trying to i'm trying to stop cussing on this channel get it back to a general admission or whatever the hell general audience level but please stop crying over this fool stop crying over the stuff y'all been through y'all wasn't even together that long did y'all have sex and didn't tell us because I'm wondering how you develop feelings so close, so quickly for somebody that you only know for about a, a week. And he wasn't even like all lovey-dovey the entire week. Ryan seems like he's sincerely apologizing and he says that he's very sorry that he didn't make them feel like they were a team in the marriage. Orion says he's very, very sorry about that. And he hasn't, he says that he hasn't been in communication with her. So Orion says that he's really afraid that he's going to say something wrong and then things go either farther south than they already are. And he explains that's basically why he hasn't been talking to her. And that's when he goes silent, when he pretty much doesn't want to say the wrong thing. Orion says that will change and he's sorry about that. Orion, you can be as sorry as you want to be. You ain't going to pull the wool over my freaking eyes. If that sorry and that apology doesn't come with a behavior adjustment, then you ain't sorry. Orion asks, is that what needs to happen? And Lauren says she doesn't know what needs to happen. What needs to happen is you leave each other alone. Okay. That's what needs to happen in this situation. You need to both move on. Lauren says that she's, she's in a place right now where it's, she's in a battle with heart versus head. Girl, what is I'm not going to tell you what the Bible says. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, religious, but I still have a little Bible knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell y'all something about your heart. Your heart is freaking deceitful and is wicked and no man can know your freaking heart. Okay. And I would suggest, you know, you getting in love. You can love with your heart all you want. You better use your mother freaking brain. And if this were me, Orion wouldn't even be sitting here talking to me. He'd be talking to a wall. He would not be talking to me. Because you said all you had to say. You had how many weeks and how many episodes to say what you had to say? Lauren says her, says her heart is like she still cares. She wants to have some type of clarity on this situation. And Lauren says that she's still in a state of confusion. But Lauren says that she's still confused. And Lauren and Orion takes responsibility for her confusion and says, okay, that's on me. That's my fault. Orion says that he hasn't had the best approach when it comes to pulling her to the side and talking to her about these things. But Orion basically says he's wanting to do that now. Lauren says that she could take that and sit with it for a while. And that's pretty much where it is. Lauren says that she has to do what's best for her. And you see the tear streamed down her face. Girl, if you don't stop crying, please. So Emily returns from the hospital and everyone, including herself, obviously, is relieved that it wasn't more serious. So Austin pretty much asks Emily to explain what happened. And she says basically she ran into a branch. She couldn't avoid it. And the branch would... The branch went up underneath her helmet. And when I tell you that they literally had to shave Emily's head in order to stitch up, she had, I know you guys can see it. I don't have to show you, but to, to, to stitch up her forehead into her scalp, they had to freaking shave her head. Girl, 
that to me is serious. So I am very grateful that it wasn't a worse, you know, I, I am so grateful that that wasn't worse and all she needed was stitches. So Becca is still bedridden and she is not well. And she mentions that Austin went to sleep in another room. Basically, she kicked him out like, get the hell out of here. But I'm sure he wasn't sad because he goes out of his way not to have to be you know, physical with Becca. I'm really sorry. There's a lot of glare in here, okay? I have a lot of lights in here, okay? If I turn the light out, so you can barely see. Becca is still sick. So the remaining ladies that are at the retreat house are having a little self-care moment, and the guys are over here playing poker. Brennan asks Michael if he was serious about borrowing Chloe's jewelry and clothes and stuff like that, and Michael's dead serious. The girls commend Emily for looking so good or whatever. At this point, Emily has washed the blood out of her hair. She says that it's so freaking hard to get blood out of blonde hair, which I can't even imagine. At least with blonde hair, you can tell when it's completely out. And as Emily's talking about it, she gets very emotional. The girls get up and get around her, give her a hug, you know, give her some moral support. Brennan expresses that he is so relieved that Emily is, you know, she's here. She's amongst the land of the living and that stuff wasn't more serious, okay? And he notes that, you know, Emily has had such a great positive attitude. Emily has always had a positive attitude. You're just now seeing it because you're blind and you're dumb. And I don't wanna say deaf, but seriously, Brennan. So Lauren informs Emily, cause Emily was out of the loop because you know, she was in the hospital, whatever. And Lauren informs Emily that Chloe was saying, you talking about Chloe like she's not sitting right there. Anyway, so <laughs> Lauren is saying that Chloe said that her and Michael are doing well. Chloe says that Michael is good hearted. He's a good man. He's funny. Chloe actually gets really real on this episode and she divulges to the girls. She's not really sexually attracted to Michael because of all this, you know, fashion stuff, this fashion forward gender bending. She doesn't want to say gender bending, but that's exactly what it is. And she's finding it very much a struggle. So Lauren emphasized, didn't I say don't use the word emphasize AI? You don't listen. You don't freaking listen. Anyway, I told them don't use the word emphasize when they summarize my, my notes and they did it anyway. Anyway, Lauren talks about the importance of communication and how, you know, if she's feeling triggered, she has no problem telling her partner, hey, I'm feeling triggered. And Chloe's like, okay, how do I go about telling Michael that I'm feeling triggered? Lauren talks about the importance of communication and how, you know, if she's feeling triggered, she has no problem telling her partner, hey, I'm feeling triggered. And Chloe's like, okay, how do I go about telling Michael that I'm feeling triggered? And Michael's talking to the guys and saying that, you know, pretty much everything fits, you know, they had a, some playful banter or whatever on the honeymoon and pretty much feels like everything is going the way that it should. So Orion asks Brennan if the dynamic of him and Emily's relationship is going to change. Now, Brennan says that they're trying to make the friendship work, but he says even though they've been through a traumatic ordeal, yeah, they're going to just push through and try to make it work. Emily, you know, is giving Brennan the praise. Anyway, she's like giving him kudos for like stepping up to the plate or whatever. But girl, this is just an act. I'm really sorry to tell you. Why did it take all of that for him to act the way he's supposed to? Emily expresses gratitude towards Brennan and how he's been helping her. She can't imagine anybody else being there with her at that time. So now Becca is feeling a lot better. Now everybody's doing yoga. So the yoga instructor asks how they show compassion in their marriages. And Lauren says she first shows compassion to herself because if she doesn't do it, who else is going to do it? If nobody else does it, she gonna do it for herself, okay? Orion says he shows compassion or he's going to show compassion about reaching out and being more communicative with Lauren because he talks directly to her. You know, Orion, a lot of the stuff that you're saying, I really wish that you would just keep that between you and Lauren. I always felt like she was making faces because this is stuff that you should be saying to her privately, not in front of the group because you have a habit of showboating in front of the group. Yeah, you have a habit of doing that and you need to stop. Becca and Austin are discussing the yoga class they just had Becca's off on the side and she's like I can't believe there was yoga and I wasn't involved in it Girl, you're recovering just relax relax yourself you can always do yoga there's always yoga yoga will always be here all right yoga will always be here Becca expresses that she's glad to be back so Austin acknowledges that the weekend did not go as planned he's just checking in to see how Becca was feeling about everything Becca notes there was clearly a lack of intimacy last night and she expresses a need for more intimacy Orion thanks Lauren for bringing those yoga instructors. Apparently they're trying to make it seem like she brought those people off from her home, from her house. Yeah. So Lauren acknowledges her emotions towards Orion. 
She says she's open. She's basically open to be open with him, which is way more than I would ever do because I'd be closed completely. Okay. Okay. Everything closed. Mouth closed. Leg closed. Everything closed. Everything's closed. Okay. That would be me. So be happy that I'm not Lauren. Okay. All right. Be happy. Lauren says that she's unsure about navigating the divorce because she doesn't know if, like, she doesn't know what she's going to receive from him as far as the divorce. And a turn of events happens. Okay, so despite her doubts, because she basically does not know, you know, she doesn't really know where she is as far as trying to have some type of friendship with this man. Despite that, she literally comes out and says she doesn't know what value she could get out of having a friendship with him because she likes for her friendships to be intentional she likes for people to actually work on the friendship and in my opinion she doesn't know if he's going to do that he hasn't done it this far she says that amongst a group setting they're civil and friendly but you know when it's not a group it's a different story orion says that you know he understands and basically they're going to basically they're going to revisit the conversation later so now the group is at a place called ninja nation Despite Emily's accident, Becca's illness, y'all out here trying to injure the remaining people in this show. I don't understand you, Lifetime. I really don't understand what you guys be thinking. So Michael and Claire display their athleticism, okay? They got over there and they did what they needed to do, all right? Left everybody in the dust. So everybody's sitting down after that. And, you know, they're admiring Michael for how he did, Claire for how she did. And they're just talking about you know, the fun that they had. So Brendan continues to bring up after this, after this situation that we just been through, after this situation we just been through, Brendan, let me just tell you something. I know you were there. <coughs> <coughs> Brendan, I know you were there, but it didn't exactly happen to you. And you're really acting like it happened to you and you're annoying me. Okay. So stop saying it happened to us. It happened to Emily. It didn't happen to y'all. It happened to Emily. Get your life together. Austin acknowledges the hiccups between him and Becca and asks for suggestions in the romance department. My suggestion is you tell her why you don't want to be with her like that. Because obviously you don't. I'm just saying. It's just my observation. I'm. You don't want to be with her. So just be honest. Just be honest. So now we get to this. Now we get to the scene where Michael is in a bathtub, and for some reason Chloe just hangs on the side. They wasn't really talking about much, okay? She was saying how she found him so attractive, despite his skirt wearing and wanting to wear her earrings thing, um, because he was Mr. Ninja Man, uh, whatever the hell you want to call it, out there on the um, obstacle course. So now Becca and Austin they're having a movie night, okay? Where it's supposed to be a movie night, but they end up talking about the fact that. Austin is not, he's not carrying his weight, all right? And Austin, what is your problem? Like, I've been asking you this in so many videos, but I just want to know what the hell is your damn problem? It's okay if you don't want to have sex. We're not talking about sex here. But why do you only want to make out? You literally told Dr. Pia that you were down for other things. Other two letters, if you know what I mean. And um, that still hasn't happened yet. So I'm just curious. I just want to know. I'm just curious. I just really want to know. Well, you know who's more curious than I am? Becca. Why can't you just tell her why you don't want to be intimate or why you don't feel flirty or whatever the hell the problem is? Why don't you just tell Becca that so that she more fully understands? If she can understand, she wouldn't be rehashing it, like you said, and wanting to talk about it all the time. I don't think that Becca is saying, I want you to have sex with me. I think she's saying... I want you to act like you want me. I want you to want me is what she told Austin. Girl, the day I got to tell a man that he needs to want me is the day. I'm out of there like the Roadrunner. All right. I'm, you know who the Roadrunner is? You young y'all get on my nerves. Go look it up. You don't know who the Roadrunner is, but I'm out of here. Austin promises to work on it. She, this is like a cycle. Becca complains about it. Austin says he'll work on it. Nothing ever gets worked on. This is how you know things are not progressing. Austin actually thinks that they are progressing in their relationship. Becca says, all we've ever done is make out. Maybe she wants you to touch her arm or something. I don't know. This is not solely about sex. Although part of it is, let's not lie here. Becca, she says to him, I want you to want me. And Austin's just like, okay. That's his attitude. His whole attitude was like, okay. Like, you know, Becca pretty much feels like this entire thing is not resolved. Back with Emily and Brennan. And Emily says that although the situation was traumatic, it showed the both of them that they really care about each other. She says that Brennan stepped up to the plate in every way possible 
Emily tells Brennan that she tried packing, but her fingers are bruised and it was hard for her. And my question, why does Brennan never offer to help her? Brennan, why aren't why aren't you helping her pack her freaking bags? I, I don't I don't get this guy. Emily thinks that they reached new heights. I'm really sorry, girl. It's just a mirage. So everybody is now preparing to leave. Becca is telling us that she feels completely disconnected to Austin. The night that they had that argu well, argument, disagreement, whatever, the one I just talked about, that was now today's the next morning. And no type of affection happened last night. He didn't snuggle. He didn't want to touch her. Nothing happened, y'all. After saying, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. Here he goes again, not changing. So Austin brings up the conversation and is like, do you want to talk? Becca is talking about the lack of intimacy the night prior. And Austin is having the nerve, the literal good gall and nerve to say that he is sick and tired of rehashing the same conversation. You literally just asked her if she wanted to talk about anything. And now that she's talking, regardless of what the subject is, you literally started the conversation. How can you start a conversation and then get annoyed at the content of the conversation? Are you dumb? Austin says that every time they rehash this conversation, it's like opening old wounds. Um, Austin, this is like a wound that is not healing. This is like you have diabetes and the wound is not healing. What are you talking about an open wound? The wound is never healed because you're not changing. For some reason, Becca says that she's nervous. What are you nervous about? But she's talking and she's like, I'm just nervous, but because and whatever. Austin cuts her a little bit and was like, it's okay if you're nervous. What are you nervous about? That he's going to leave? Let his ass leave. He ain't doing nothing. Austin apologizes again. He has regret about how things went the other night. And he lets Becca know, you know, everything's going to be all right. He goes and hugs her and she's like, a, a, a kiss will go a long way and you know, she, he gives her a couple of pecks and says, you know, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. And Austin's going to be another one that's going to divorce on decision day. I'm really sorry to tell you guys. All right. And Austin's going to be another one that's going to divorce on decision day. I'm really sorry to tell you guys. So Emily reflects on the weekend and she's very hopeful. That's all I have to say, girl. Keep, keep hope alive because... I'm really sorry, but your dreams are going to die, okay? Sorry. Everybody's left the retreat, and on the way back home from the retreat, Austin has decided that, you know, things really did not go the way that he had planned them to go. Yeah, right, you had no plan, you're liar. Anyway, he decides that on the way home, he's going to stop at like a wolf conservatory or whatever, and you want Becca to be eaten by wolves. All righty then. Uh, you know what? I don't get it, personally, but... I love animals, even though I eat them. Really sorry. Maybe one day I won't, but I do. But yeah, and he takes her to a conservatory. They have a little fun, you know, and um, Becca shares that she had no intention of being a failure on this experiment. All she ever had in her head was straight success. Despite it being hard, Becca says she knows that relationships are hard work and she's willing to put in the work, okay? She is willing to freaking put in the work because, because she wants this to last forever. Anyway, guys, I am done with this video. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.